Uh, good morning, all. Um, welcome to the uh, Australian Institute of Animal Management's uh, 2015 workshops being held in Townsville. Um, I thank you all for your attendance and appreciate the time you have taken out and your um, local governments and state governments and so forth that have uh, given you the opportunity to attend. My name's Michael Smith. I'm the president of the Institute. And um, for this morning, I will be um, hosting the, the number of speakers here. Um, I would first off like to introduce uh, Auntie Jeanette Wiles, um, who will do Welcome to Country, and uh, I'd like to invite them up now with uh, Reinhardt, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, and Wadamuli, everyone, and Wadamuli is welcome in Biragaba language. The Birragubba people are the people from Townsville down to the Whitsundays. And part of the Birragubba nation are the Bindal people, traditional owners of the land on which you stand today. So on behalf of the Bindal people, I welcome you to country and I welcome you to Townsville and this forum. I acknowledge Walkarookaba people that we share this land with, all Torres Strait Islander peoples and each and every one of you that we share this great nation with and I acknowledge Elders, past and present, and to the future. Thank you very much, Townsville City Council, for inviting us along to open this magnificent forum, National Forum of Animal Management. As we walked in this morning and as we talked about this forum, we were looking at the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander perspectives of animal management, which takes us back to native animals, to our totems, to our spiritual beliefs, but finding out what your program's all about is excellent, that you work closely with animals, looking after their well-being and their care and working in partnerships with RSPCA throughout Australia. I acknowledge everybody from all over Australia here and um, we look forward to working in partnerships with each and every one of you and put in an Indigenous perspective towards your forums and your programs. I acknowledge you, Councillor Gary Eddinghausen, what a Molly, have a great day, and for all those people who came from rainy places, I hope you brought rain with you. But welcome to sunny Townsville, and what a Molly, and thank you. Thank you, Arnie Jeanette and Reinhardt. Um, next off, I would like to introduce uh, Councillor Gary Eddiehausen, our Chairman of Healthy and Safe Committee of Townsville City Council, who will open the workshops. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'd like to, to acknowledge the Bindal and Woolgaroo Kabar peoples as traditional owners and custodians of the land where we meet today. I pay my respects to them, to their culture, to their ancestors and elders, both past and present. Thank you, Auntie Janet. I'd also like to acknowledge Michael Smith, who is the president of the Australian Institute of Animal Management, and also a very special welcome to Gareth Collar from Auckland City Council. Gareth, would you put your hand up? Gareth, I'm a little disappointed. I was only in New Auckland a couple of weeks ago, and if I had known you were coming, I would have, there was a couple of bottles of uh, Village Winery Sauvignon Blanc that you could have brought with me, so you've, no brandy points there, Gareth. Ladies and gentlemen, as Chair of the Townsville City Council's Healthy and Safe City Committee, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to our wonderful city, and, and I'm sure you'll agree the weather has been fantastic, and I hope it, I'm sure it will continue for the next couple of days, but we do need rain. And also welcome to the 2015 Australian Institute of Animal Management Conference. As we are all aware, animal management has been and continues to become increasingly important in Australia. I should know, as a former police officer of 40 years, I know that in some instances, my human and canine animal management practices were honed over a 40-year career. I have the scars from both groups to prove it. Research indicates that Australia has one of the highest rates of pet ownership in the world with two-thirds of residents across Australia owning a pet and an animal. 
40% of residents uh, own dogs, while 26% own cats. So that's 3.7 million dogs and 2.2 million cats right across this country. More than 90% of pet owners report that they are very close to their companion animal, reinforcing the view that pets are an integral member of the family unit and society. While they may not be in an electoral role, well, unfortunately, because I've got two cats and two dogs at home that I inherited from my kids, put simply, pets are a very important part of the Australian way of life, and no doubt similar in New Zealand. They're good for our health and well-being, and that of our communities, providing companionship, home security, encouraging exercise, and promoting social interaction, but also requiring pet owner responsibilities. Regulating this space is increasingly falling to local government, where it's sometimes not fully recognised, understood or funded. The issue of dog attacks is not an easy one to deal with from a governance or a, com or a uh, communication standpoint. Councils also have to operate in an environment of legislative and social change while dealing with community expectations, which are pretty high, as you're all aware. Traditionally, councils have been focused on the three R's, roads, roads, and roads, roads, roads and rubbish. We all know those. As a result, an animal management issues are now very high among the people issues and complaints that councils have to deal with. Yet this area often lacks support and funding. This leaves staff balancing emotive and potentially negative concerns with limited resources and sometimes a lack of political will. But what we're concerned about here today is the five R's, risk, resilience, response, relief and recovery. Similar to the disaster management role I undertake as Deputy Chair of the local disaster management group. I'm proud to say that Townsville City Council has led the way in animal management for many years, providing considerable funding for community education, especially in the area of dog aggression. I'm very proud of the work that our council officers perform on a daily basis, but we can always do better. This year, we were a state finalist in the Government Communication Australia Awards for Excellence. Our graphic campaign told residents about the real life experiences of 11 year old Kynan, who was attacked by a roaming dog in his own front yard. He received horrific, severe facial and head injuries. The story also provided an insight from the perspective of Kynan's mother and also, importantly, from the council officer who handled the incident. Overall, we showed how multiple people can be affected just through one single dog attack. In the presentation, Kynan bravely disclosed how trauma had changed his life. He said, I used to play outside with my friends after school. I don't feel like it anymore. That's very powerful and you people as, who deal with animal management issues certainly know that. But if you can't be, uh, I guess, inspired by those words to perform better, I'm not sure what would make you do that. This campaign that we had was posted via billboards on busy roads, on the council dog trucks, school buses, commercial TV and social media. And we achieved blanket coverage on our local news programs, on all of them actually. No other council in Australia, to our knowledge, has delivered such a gripping, hard-hitting campaign, especially involving the victim of a dog attack. It certainly was a big wake-up call for many of our local dog owners. I'm pleased to report the Townsville's initiative was a big community success. I and other councillors also received tremendous feedback from the community in regards to the media campaign. Now, despite our city's popula city population growth, the upward trend of complaints regarding aggressive dogs and dog attacks, which had been increasing by 10% a year, this has been reversed. As our research indicated, what we needed to create what we needed to create change in the community was engagement on social media, the suggestion of fear and a clear call to action. 
We, the councillors, and also the uh, City Council management, continue to explore this area, refining our message, working closely in partnership with members of the community, pet owners, and also very closely with our animal management department at the Townsville City Council. This is our experience. I'm sure there are many others you're exchanging and will be exchanging during this conference, and I look forward to hearing about the initiatives that may arise during discussions and experiences which we in turn may be able to use in the future. I've just had a read of the program and I'm, I'm sorry that I'm not going to be able to stay because it looks very interesting, but I'll be very interested to find out what comes out of the conference. In closing, I'd like to thank our guest speakers for sharing their time and knowledge with you. And I offer my thanks to you, our 86 delegates, for taking part. You are the ones of the coalface, men and women who are the public face of organisations keeping our communities healthy and safe. During the break, if you get a chance to have a look outside at the people who are presenting outside, please do so, but uh, have a great time in Townsville. We love having you here uh, and have a, have a great time, but also, to, especially to me, Kiwi, mate, I, I love Kiwis and I visit there every year, so thank you very much and have a wonderful time.